Hi everybody, welcome to our revision webinar for AS Microeconomics. And in this session, we're just going to take a look at some ways in which you can improve your evaluation of different forms of government intervention in markets. So just as a quick introduction, government intervention, of course, is essentially to try and improve, even maximise the social welfare of the wider community. They're taking, if you like, the global view of when, when they intervene in a market. Oftentimes they're looking to try to correct one or more market failures and hopefully you've covered them in your revision. We'll revise one or two of them in this session, trying to make the market economy work more efficiently and perhaps also try to make the market economy, the free market mechanism, work more equitably. So we're looking at intervention in markets. Of course, this all goes back to the idea of market failure. If there is market failure, there is a case in some shape or form for some form of government intervention in the market. Uh, I like this definition of market failure. It's when the price mechanism leads to an inefficient allocation of scarce resources and a deadweight loss of economic and perhaps social welfare. In other words, the market isn't, isn't working optimally from a social welfare point of view. Loads of different examples of market failure, negative externalities in production and consumption, positive externalities in production and consumption. The uh, under provision of uh, public goods, uh, merit goods, of course, uh, demerit goods, uh, overconsumption of demerit goods. There's lots of examples of information failures in markets, economics of monopoly power, how, how best to address market power and uh, immobility of labour, occupational, geographical mobility of labour. So there are many different types of market failure in your revision. Make sure you're really clear on all of these causes there's lots of diagrams that go with each and of course our focus in this session is going to be how can governments intervene should they intervene in markets to try to correct one or more of these market failure problems we're going to look at a few examples of interventions so i can't cover everything in this session but of course there are separate topic videos on each of them and they're all in the market failure youtube playlist so hopefully that'll be useful for you Let's take the example of indirect taxes, just to be different, because it's a Friday. We're going to look at ad valorem taxes, percentage taxes, a sales tax, such as the 20% VAT rate on, the, on a large number of products. Here's our diagram. Uh, are you familiar with this? Are you happy with this one? An ad valorem tax causes a pivotal shift, inward shift in the supply curve, a pivotal shift. Because the tax is a percentage of the unit cost, so if, there's a, if the price is higher, then uh, the, the tax will change. So, so for example, if the cost of a, of a good is £50, if you apply a 20% tax, it adds £10 to the price. Uh, and uh, if, you, if, if the product is £400, well, it's adding £70 of VAT. The absolute amount of the tax goes up as the market price increases. So that's a good example of, a, of an indirect tax, it's an intervention in the market example, putting VAT on, on uh, high salty foods, whatever, an extra tax on, on uh, carbon emissions, for example. Let's look at the evaluation arguments. So what kind of issues, what kind of evaluation points can you make regarding indirect taxes? Here we go. Lots of text on this slide, but I'll take it fairly slowly. First way you can evaluate is to challenge the effectiveness of a tax and also to bring in the possible unintended consequences. So one of the key evaluation questions is, well, actually, does a tax work? Does it actually achieve its objectives? Does it change, for example, consumer behaviour? Well, that depends in part on the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. If the elasticity is low, it could take quite a big tax to have any significant change in, in quantity consumed. Another evaluation point, it's very difficult sometimes to set the tax at the right level to achieve the aim. If you think about you know, the 5p plastic bag tax and uh, or the 12p for bigger bags, if you think about the sugar tax that's been brought in, trying to find the optimal level of a tax is a pretty tough ask. Oftentimes you have to kind of see what happens and maybe adjust. Third point within this little section, are there unintended consequences? So if you get any intervention in the market has at least one unintended side effect. I'll give you an example of that in a few minutes. Another way you can evaluate, does it raise the revenue? How much tax revenue does it raise? Is it a big tax earner, particularly for goods with an inelastic demand? Or does it raise though little? 
And crucially, major evaluation point, how is the tax revenue used? Does it go into the general pot of tax to fund everything from welfare to education to road building? Or is the tax revenue used for a particular, a specific purpose? So the sugar tax, for example, the revenue from that is supposedly allocated to increasing funding for sport in primary schools. Whether or not it does, of course, is, a, is another matter. Wider effects, third point, what is the impact on businesses and competitiveness? So, for example, thinking about a little bit of the macroeconomics there. If you put a tax on a product, does it make uh, a producer, an industry, less competitive on the global stage? Could that lead to job losses and things? Uh, will businesses cut back on investment? Will they cut back on employment? Quite, quite important macro effects to think about, particularly when it comes to things like carbon taxes. And fourthly, and this is really important, I cannot stress this enough, if you are talking about a tax in a market, an indirect tax, particularly a tax on consumers, please remember to, to, to make a comment, an evaluative comment about the possible consequences for equity and for, in other words, the distribution of income and wealth. Who, who are the winners from a tax? Who are the losers? Does a tax, for example, have a disproportionate effect on lower income groups? Could you call a tax like VAT, like the sugar tax? Is it regressive? In other words, does it have a bigger impact on lower income families? So effectiveness, revenue, competitiveness, fairness. You know, these are some of the ways that you can evaluate a tax as well as thinking about the alternatives. Tax may not be the best policy. Let's move on to subsidies. We're not going to cover everything today. We're just going to look as much as we can. Um, and subsidies, of course, an alternative to a tax. Um, subsidy to a producer lowers their costs, it causes a, an outward shift of market supply. I've shown the shaded area, shows the amount the government's going to spend on the subsidy. <coughs> Pardon me. The government will receive P3 after the subsidy. The consumer will pay P2. And of course, the government has to fund uh, that block because the quantity is Q2. So they're going to they're going to spend some money on the subsidy. How can we evaluate subsidies? Well, lots of government subsidised industries, again, follow a simple uh, pattern here. How can we evaluate? One, does it meet its aims? How effective are subsidies? If you subsidise childcare, for example, does that actually increase the supply of childcare? If you subsidise free entry to museums, or if you subsidise um, student transport in the, in the local economy, <coughs> does it actually achieve the desired stimulus to consumption that you want. Is a subsidy enough? Might you need other incentives? So for example, if the elasticity of demand is low, might you have to offer a second or a third type of incentive to get people to change their behaviour? Uh, does, does a subsidy affect productivity? How do, does it affect the efficiency of businesses? So for example, subsidising research and subsidising high level investment can, be, can bring long term externality benefits. But there's also a danger, of course, that, that firms and businesses might become too dependent on state aid or other forms of financial assistance. You want to get the balance right between uh, prompting good things like investment and research and avoiding bad things like inefficiency and over-dependence. How much does the subsidy cost? Uh, who's, who's going to pay and who benefits? So is a, is a subsidy partly self-financing uh, because it creates more jobs, for example, which creates more tax revenue? Or, ultimately, is the subsidy quite expensive and uh, ultimately paid for by taxpayers? And crucially, uh, does the subsidy actually help to correct the market failure? Uh, if, if, for example, a childcare subsidy, do people find more work as a result of offering better quality childcare at a better price? Or are there unintended consequences? More on that in a second. Lots of, uh, lots of ways you can evaluate. So here's, let's just take an, an example here. Different ways to reduce inequality. So. There's a big debate at the moment about how best to bring inequality down, bring it down. And here are four, here are five ways actually: minimum wage, free well, uh, free government services, a high rate of income tax, uh, investment in training, and subsidies for childcare. Here are five clear policy interventions which could, in theory, reduce poverty. Always best in the exam if you're not given an example in the stimulus to draw on or application marks. Always best to have a good example. The government's just recently raised the minimum wage to £7.20. Of course, NHS treatment remains free at the point of use. 45% top rate of tax. Should it be higher? 
the government's now offering subsidies for internships and training and it's now offering a contribution of two thousand pounds a year for each child for childcare. so there's lots going on at the moment in terms of trying to reduce inequality so but in your, when you're in the exam uh make the point the intervention is this okay high minimum wage give an example build the analysis to talk about how a minimum wage might work for example it increases work incentives increases the, the wage between pay and work and pay out of work but then criticize balanced evaluation please argue in a balanced way minimum wage would be good for those people that have a job in low paid employment but it could cost some jobs and perhaps lead to higher prices all the time thinking about the, the extent to which these arguments are valid and the extent to which these arguments are justifiable and I'm, okay there's a lot of stuff on this slide I don't make any apologies for that you know, there are five policy interventions here each of which has an example you just build the analysis for each and then you're thinking right I'm going to challenge this I'm going to twist it around I'm going to and the key point here of course is you're trying to evaluate the point you've made you're not just trying to bring in another separate point you're trying to evaluate the point that's made so for example right at the bottom the subsidies for childcare in theory it improves incentives particularly for young mums and things who want to you know get back to work and uh, they like, love raising their family but they also want to work maybe part-time but the subsidy needs to be effective and the key is not just the quantity of childcare but also the quality of childcare that that's evaluation a few words on government failure government failure will have a I think there's a separate topic video already on government failure in the um, in the playlist actually so it might be worth just checking that one out government failure occurs when an intervention in the market like a tax or a subsidy done with the best of intentions actually causes the market failure either to be worse or or a new failure you create another another failure in its wake in other words interventions are either inefficient or makes things worse so some policies might have long damaging long-term effects some policies might just not be very effective and it was not very good and some policies of course might create more losers than winners and you may find that out after a little while I think the, the bit in the box here is really key let me just highlight it for you I, I love this phrase actually I don't know where you got it from but government failure can happen if a policy decision fails to create enough of an incentive to mm. change people's actual behavior in other words people in theory you think our oh, tax on x will affect behavior but in reality it doesn't so that's really quite a good good example there of course the other thing is should the government intervene at all you can make a case for saying actually the free market is such a powerful device you should let markets sort out some problems loads of potential causes of government failure again there's a separate topic video on this so i won't go over all the ground but are you familiar with some of these um decisions taken because of political lobbying and political self-interest and invested interests of just one or two um, agents in the economy government searching for a quick fix they suffer from myopia they only can think of the next next day's headlines instead of thinking long term governments might get captured by or businesses might get cap captured by regulators who then take interest in, take decisions in the interest of businesses rather than consumers Governments themselves can suffer from information failures. They don't have all the info needed to put in place a policy. They can create disincentive effects, for example, the poverty trap. There could be big compliance, big administration, big enforcement costs associated with interventions, particularly regulations, of course. Um, policies might conflict with other objectives. So environmental interventions might conflict with macroeconomic in incentives. And of course, if you have governments intervening the whole time, you are going to get a mass of red tape. Hence, a picture of some red tape, which is quite sticky. Here's some examples of government failure, self-interest, caused by lobbying. So I think farm support policies, think the drinks industry. Uh, poor value for money. Lots of government projects turn out to be very wasteful, very expensive. Policy short-termism. Um, you know, government's looking for a quick fix, so giving ASBOs for offenders, they become a badge of honour. Uh, road widening doesn't really reduce congestion, it just creates more traffic on the roads. Regulatory capture is where the government agency basically operates in favour of producers rather than consumers. You can make a case for saying that the, the alcohol lobby is quite, quite powerful. 
Um, conflicting objectives. Carbon price could damage the competitiveness of UK businesses. Lots of red tape in meeting health and safety laws. I like unintended consequences. I hopefully you've covered this in revision. Any single intervention has at least one unintended consequence, at least. So the smoking ban, which I think is one of the most important pieces of legislation in the last 50 years, ban on smoking in public places, tremendous bit of legislation. Others will disagree, that's my own personal view. But one of the unintended consequences is that there's been a tremendous increase in the use of outdoor patio heaters, um, which of course you can argue is environmentally insane. But government failure is a natural feature of intervention. It happens. It's part of the evaluation. I think they're really top students. They take a look and say, right, is government failure in these cases, is it really, really significant? Let's take the last example as a final point. Is the increased use of outdoor patio heaters a significant government failure because of the ban on public smoking? And my argument would be it's not because fundamentally the benefits from the ban on public smoking far outweigh the environmental cost of outdoor patio heaters, annoying as they might be from my own personal perspective. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's been useful for you in some shape or form. A lot of separate topic videos on the YouTube channel about intervention. Indirect taxes, public goods, merit goods, the lot. So just check out our playlist, our market failure playlist. If you're doing your AS exams pretty soon and find a three or four or six minute video on each individual topic. But for now, everybody, thanks for joining in and uh, good luck with the revision.